Hey, Dennis Michael Lynch here. Coming for the first time for a long time. It's been a, a while since I've been doing the live. Anyway, um, <clears throat> all right, see the audience is starting to climb here. So let me just jump in. I haven't been here for a while with you. Uh, hope you're well. We will be coming back full time, uh, middle of September. Hopefully sometime, uh, I don't know, September 11th is my target date, but we're starting to feel a lot better on this side. Things are uh, improving vastly, and uh, but slowly. So anyway, we're hoping that uh, things will be uh, set by September 11th here, and we could get resumed to our walk and talks at that point. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of you who have continued to check in on our website, which is doing incredibly well, best it's ever done, uh, to be quite honest, uh, in terms of how many articles and all the different things we're covering from the news. And um, you know, so although I haven't been doing the videos, uh, we have been working around the clock great staff we have and just fantastic people on the other side meaning you and uh, I ask you remember that the most powerful thing you have is that share button and with without using it it's sort of like you know having a nice crisp $100 bill and I don't know throwing it in the garbage so make sure that you hit the share button at all times that is how it is that you do your part in battling what is basically an insane media that's my new term insane media I want to discuss with you uh, some of the things that have taken place over the past couple of days. I'm talking about uh, the unfortunate events that took place in Virginia, but just as for as as un just as bad, put it that way, is the way that it's being handled after the fact. And um, and I say that with no uh, disrespect to the people who have lost their lives. Obviously, there's no greater loss than that. But we need to really recognize what's happening here. If you remember back in September, uh, the first walk and talk I had ever done, I had said, hey look, you know, I've been a member of the media for, for nine years and I can tell you what's going on behind uh, those doors, stuff that you don't see. Uh, Donald Trump is going to win this election. They know he's going to win this election. They're scared to all living hell that he's going to win this election. And so this is what they're going to start doing. And every single thing I told you came to fruition. Why is that? I don't have a magic ball. Uh, it's because I understand what goes on behind those doors. I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it as a guest. I've seen it as a host. I've seen it uh, on the radio. I've seen it on the TV. I've seen it in every single last way. It's, 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 it's sickening. Um, and forever, uh, the media has controlled the narrative. Forever, the media has picked the president. And so what happened with Donald J. Trump is that he changed all that. He made it to where the media, no matter what it tried to do, could not pick the president this time. That being said, this is what's happening here again. Again, I want to emphasize a few things before I get into what will be probably somewhat of an emotional rant because uh, I cannot believe what I am watching. I guess I can believe it. Understand something um, uh, that, that cannot be argued. There is one thing that the media will pound on all day long. It is the number one topic that drives the media. They love it. They absolutely love it when it comes to the surface. And that is race. They love race wars. You must understand this. You take a Trump tweet at the worst case and you take the smallest of little race wars, they won't tune in to Trump. Race wars for the media is the number one thing. It stops everything else. How can I prove I'm right? Think about this. Think about all the different events that have taken place. Uh, terrorist attacks over in Europe. Things happening here in the U.S. And no matter what, CNN, MSNBC, they'll never cover that other stuff. They'll just stick to the Russia narrative. They want to pound that home because they think that's their champion. They think that's the ticket to get Trump out is the Russia thing. Now we know that the Russia thing is a bunch of hot air, but they continue to continue with it. And as I've told you before, they'll continue to continue with it for as long as they possibly can, trying to take it into the 2018 midterms, and then they'll try to take it into the 2020s. And ultimately, it will come back to be that Trump didn't do any kind of collusion with the Russians. Honestly, Trump isn't that smart. And when I mean that, I don't mean that in a, in a derogatory way. I mean, he's not that calculated. He doesn't connect the dots. 
he is a he is a reactionary. He is not a, some some strategic planner. That's why when I hear people say that he's playing fifth dimensional chess, no, he's not. Fifth dimensional chess would drive him crazy. He just sees and he does. He sees and he speaks. He is a reactionary. That said, where's the Russia narrative right now? Have have you heard CNN bring it up? Have you heard the name Robert Mueller? No. The reason being is because they're going to take this race thing and they are going to squeeze every ounce of the water that they can from that rock. They're going to stick with this and they're going to pound it and pound it and pound it. Thank goodness. And you know, you know how much I can't stand the Trump tweets, especially the bad ones. You know I have held the president accountable a gazillion times. On this particular case, I can't say he is more spot on. Why? Why is he spot on? Because it's a trap. You understand this? This goes back to my media training. It is a trap. It is a trap in the same way of predetermining what the questions are and are not going to be before a debate. It is a trap. The first time, the first time that Donald J. Trump acknowledges David Duke or any white supremacist in the way that they want him to acknowledge them, he's done for. He's done for. They try to make it. Think about this guy. Think about what they have put him, the, the situation. If he says David Duke, he is held accountable for giving David Duke his 15 minutes of fame once again. If he doesn't say David Duke, they scream at him that he didn't say David Duke. He cannot win. What Trump has done, because he doesn't know how else to do it, in these press conferences, specifically the one that he had today, he can't contain himself. He can't give you some spin. He can't. He can't come to terms with, no, with, with, with not expressing what he really feels. Does Donald J. Trump believe that the rhetoric that comes from the KKK and the white supremacists is a good thing? Of course he does not. One of the most viral videos that we have ever had on DennisMichaelLynch.com was of a black woman who had actually suffered from a drug um, problem that worked for the Trump administration. Every single reason there was to get rid of this woman, she was doing drugs. Basically, there's no other, you're doing drugs, you're gone. Trumps didn't get rid of her. The Trumps stuck with her. They stuck with her and tried to bring her back out of that world of drugs and make her happy and clean again. And they did. She's a black woman. If Trump was a racist, she wouldn't have been hired to begin with, let alone brought from, 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 from total despair back to the kind of person who could sit there and make a video and say, I used to have a drug problem. D Donald J. Trump, two girls, Diamond and Silk, two girls that I basically brought out of nowhere and gave them a platform. I gave them their names. I gave them their, their, their introduction to the media. Donald J. Trump had them up on stage at every single last rally, hugging them, kissing them, just praising them. If you're a racist, if you believe what the KKK and the white supremacists do and think and feel and promote, you don't ever, ever take diamond and silk up on stage and kiss them and tell them how great they are. You despise them. The hatred that you would have in your body is that you would despise them. A guy like me, if, if I were one of those people, you think I'm going to sit there and help two black girls become famous? No way. I, I, I embrace them, right? So Donald J. Trump is not a racist, and therefore Donald J. Trump cannot support the ideology and the thoughts of these maniacs who are racists and who are KKK members. But Donald J. Trump is also not going to deny what's going on on the other side. And that's what the left wants him to do. They want Donald J. Trump to take all of Saturday's events and pin it on one organization. And it's not even the KKK. They are trying to create the alt-right into this new level of poisonous bad person. If you remember, the alt-right was the person who read, bri uh, read the bri uh, Breitbart 
website. The alt-right was somebody who believed in what the policies of Donald J. Trump were during the campaign. This was a slogan and a term made up by the DNC, Hillary Clinton, and every left-leaning organization, and it stuck. But now what they're trying to do is they're trying to widen the gap. They're trying to widen who falls into that bucket, namely you. If you love Trump, you're a hater. But for the left, if you hate Trump, they love you to death. This is what they do. It is so backwards. It is so unbelievably backwards. Meanwhile, the Democrats are the ones who fought to keep slavery. It was the Republicans who tried to end it. But that all gets lost. Because what they've done is they've changed the narrative over the course of time. And they pound these false narratives until the perception becomes reality. And then everything changes. So Donald J. Trump is going to stand up there and he's going to say what's true. He's going to say, no, this is all sides. And he asked them, wait a second. If you're going to blame the alt-right, well, then what about the alt-left that was there? Carrying clubs and carrying bats. Why did they show up in the first place? Because the best way to, 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 to rid of a hater in the KKK is you ignore them. You don't even return their emails. You don't even look at them. You don't stop and read their literature. You, you just keep walking. Why would you even show up if they're going to sit there and, and have some sort of protest? You don't unless you want to fight. Unless you are the alt-left looking to fight the whites. I mean, the, the, the white supremacists and the KKK. But see, it's not fashionable. It's not fashionable in the media to call out Black Lives Matter. It's not fashionable to call out the alt-left. This woman, this girl, I don't even know her name, uh, Ebony, I think her name is, on The Specialists uh, on Fox News at 5 p.m. If you're wasting your time on there, shame on you. There's got to be something else at 5 o'clock you could do. This woman on Fox News, in fact, I watched The Specialist today just to see what it was. You'd swear you were watching MSNBC. They're just totally tossing Trump under the, uh, under the bus that he missed a golden opportunity. No, he didn't. What he did was he took advantage of a golden opportunity. If this was Obama, Obama would have stood up there and just slammed KKK, David Duke. He would have made it a one-sided story that made it appear as if these guys came and just walked up to random people and just started killing them and beating them down. What wound up happening was that there was a confrontation of two groups that absolutely live for hate and violence and anti-Americanism. That's really what came down to it. And Trump knows that he needs to call it out and he's gonna stick by his guns. Because the truth of the matter is, is that the left is dangerous, the left is hateful, the left is worse. The left have more crazy maniacs on their side than any amount of KKK or white supremacists. The KKK and white supremacists are two little tiny little things. You want to know what else that Trump remembers so very clearly? And that's why he will not just favor blaming one side? Do you remember all the Trump rallies? Do you remember Chicago? Do you remember all the stuff that happened throughout California? Where white people and older elderly people were getting their asses handed to them by thugs, by people of the left, mainly, mostly Latinos and blacks? Do you remember that? Do you remember the videos by by that young guy, the, 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 the video guy who goes in undercover? What the hell is the, the, the name of that place? I can't remember his name. He went in there for the DNC, actually plotting to beat the hell out of people? How is it that Chuck Schumer, just last month after the shooting that took place in Virginia, where a Bernie Sanders nut job comes with a gun, specifically goes and targets Republicans, and starts shooting away, trying with the intent to kill all the guys on the softball team. That was not deemed a terror, domestic terrorism. No. How can it be that he can target Republicans and Chuck Schumer can go on television and say, you know, we've all got to come together. The rhetoric right now is coming in from both sides and we really have to stop it. We have to all come together. How is that permissible? But yet the president of the United States, who has lived firsthand what the other side, if you will, and I'm talking about the other side of hate, because yes, he understands that the KKK is hate. But how, does, how is it that he should not, why is it that he should not acknowledge both sides of the coin when Chuck Schumer can? Why is it that this president 
with the guts to stand up there and call it what it is. There's hate on both sides, on all sides. Why is he, he praised? Why isn't he praised when President Barack Hussein Obama would get up there and blame just one side? You know, when Trayvon Martin was killed, he got up there, President Obama, and said, you know, that Trayvon could be my son. Well, Trayvon doesn't even have, Obama doesn't even have sons, okay? But nonetheless, he could have been my son. But when Kate Steinle, a white lady, was killed by an illegal alien in San Francisco who had been deported five times and who had been hit seven times with different criminal activity and was not deported, kept out of this country. He was protected by sanctuary city, San Francisco, and under the Obama immigration policies, which were basically were just blind to what was going on. Obama never even referenced that girl, let alone say, that could have been my daughter. When Black Lives Matter, we're, we're burning down cities. When Black Lives Matter took the inauguration of a president and, dis, and destroyed the, the day, destroyed businesses, destroyed cars, went after innocent Trump people because they had a Make America Great Again hat on, President Obama didn't get on and say anything in his Twitter account, not a single thing. He didn't condemn them. He didn't say anything bad about them. He just let it go. But now he's going to come out with this big, huge, we must all love each other tweet after this whole thing that just happened in Virginia. Yeah, we should just all love each other. But we should put out that message when both sides make the mistake of spreading hate. Not when you feel like it's appropriate. But the media doesn't say anything. They don't say anything about Obama. They said nothing about Obama when he called out police officers at a memorial for the cops in Dallas that were killed by a black guy who said he hates white people. Five cops. People who come out and, and defend and protect innocent lives that they don't even know. They're dead because some guy said he hates whites. President Trump is referring to all of this and he's going to be crucified for it? They go to a press conference and they don't give him the respect to let him finish his sentence. And that's where I say President, President Trump has made a huge mistake. President Trump, you've made a lot of mistakes of late. Scaramucci, okay? I'll give you another mistake answering these clowns. First of all, when a press conference is over, it's over. Don't stop and give them more. Leave them wanting more. Okay? Sometimes less is more, sir. Secondly, you are the President of the United States. You are to finish your statements without being interrupted. If one of these people interrupt you, you kick them out. You kick them out. You do not stop your sentence and your thought to answer some low-life media hawk who's trying to make you look like a moron. Just ignore them. And you make your statement, and that's that. These people getting on there and, and, and trying to make it sound like you know, Trump is trying to protect uh, you know, his voter base. No, his voter base, I got some news for you. And this is why they never ever put real strong people on television who will, who will, who will try to fight for Trump. Never ever. They, this is why these other places, they all load, they stack, they stack the deck. They load it up like CNN just got rid of Jeffrey Lord, right? One guy, Lord would be the one guy to give a good argument to five or six absolute morons. They don't want people who can make a strong argument. And they know that Trump, what Trump is saying, he isn't saying that you're allowed to go and hate on people and kill people. He blatantly said that the guy who was in the car who murdered the girl, he can't get tried fast enough. But if he doesn't say the exact words they want him to say, it's no good. It's no good. Meanwhile, if President Trump were to ever say the words that they want him to say about the white supremacist and the KKK, if he were to say those sort of words about Black Lives Matter, he would be deemed a racist. So there's absolutely no way that this guy can win with these people. And therefore, that's why I say what he has done is unbelievably fantastic. Does it mean, like this, this woman from the specialist on Fox, does it mean that he missed an opportunity? He didn't miss anything. He said for what it is, there's no room for hate in this country. It's been going on for too long and it needs to stop. What else do you want the guy to say? 
other than God bless America. And you know what? Let me conclude on this. What he said today was spot on. They asked him, how do you think all these race relations will get better? First of all, the last time I checked, the United States of America elected a black man with a Muslim sounding name, not a once, but a twice. We celebrate Black History Month, not Black History Day, not Black History Week, Black History Month. The last time I was in a store and I bumped into a, a, a black guy or a girl, excuse me, oh, excuse me, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. There's no, I don't see this sort of wide racism they're talking about. They want to rip down statues. They want to rip down statues. The statues is there. They should. It's the other way around. You want people to remember what it was that uh, America once was? You keep those statues up. Because what it does is in one way it represents how far we've come. You don't rip down statues because you don't like them. There's a school, in, a school district in Portland that just took down the name Lynch off all the signs and the names of these schools. Land that was donated by a family named Lynch. It's the CNN police trying to find me. Anyway, they take off the name Lynch from the schools because they say they don't want children to be uncomfortable when they go because the name Lynch, because the word Lynch has negative connotation to it. First of all, first of all, the land was donated by a family named Lynch who has absolutely no connection to any lynchings that took place in this country. Number two, if those schools were named after Loretta Lynch or the running back who is not standing up for the, for the national anthem, M Marshawn Lynch, you think the school district would still be saying, eh, you know, we got to take these down. Not a chance. Not a chance. But a guy sent me an email today, which was brilliant. He said, I guarantee you, that, you know, they're trying to protect the kids. If you went up to 10 of those school kids in that elementary school and asked them to give you the definition of a lynching, none of them, not a one, would know what the hell you were talking about. They don't know when they walk in what the, the word lynch means. First of all, it means a person's name. But second of all, is they don't know. This is so disgusting because it's a school district trying to use children as a way to push their own rip down the statue narrative. That's really what it comes down to. Let's be honest. Let's really, truly be honest. And then today, you see, I think it was in North Carolina, groups going around and just taking it upon their own to rip down statues out of public, public places and parks. Guarantee you. I would, I would, I would bet almost anything. You go up to one of these hoodlums who's ripping down that statue and say, who is that on that statue? They're clueless. And even if they do, let's just say they, oh, that's General Lee. Because uh, it says General Lee at the bottom and at least they could read. Say, well, what did General Lee do? What did he do that you specifically don't like? Can you give me the history of General Lee? Not one. Not one will be able to answer you. The reason why they're out there is because it's fashionable to rebel. It's fashionable to hate Trump. It's fashionable to resist. It's fashionable to present, pretend as if Donald J. Trump, president, elect, uh, president, president we elected, is not doing what he promised to do. And he is. He said today, sorry it took me so long to get to the point. He said today that the way that you solve these race relations is by creating jobs. And he is so dead right. The majority of these people who are out causing trouble every single day are doing so because they are bored out of their skull. They are not out trying to protect against racism. Racism is not spreading around like the flu. All right? These people are bored. They have no purpose in life. 
They wake up in the morning and they have nothing to aspire to. They're tired of sitting down and watching television. They want to get out and do something. And because there's nothing to do for them productive, because walking and exercising just isn't enough, they need to be part of something. And so they get part of something and they go, oh, I'll rip down those statues. That's cool. And that's where they're part of this. You give them jobs, you give them real meaning, maybe some responsibility. You give them, they talk about, I want some opportunity. There's plenty of opportunities. My goodness, Amazon just put out a job, a job needs for 50,000 positions. 50,000 positions. Jobs are plenty right now. Get out and go get a job. Seriously. Stop trying to, stop for one second and actually listen to what Donald J. Trump is saying. He's saying all sides have to come together. All sides have to stop hating. And we are going to make America great again by bringing back economic opportunity for everyone. This, this girl on, uh, this ebony girl on, on Fox News ends it with, you have a, a responsibility to stand up there and tell them that making America great again, that the opportunity is really there for them. He, you know what? Here's the difference. Maybe Obama would stand up there and say something, but his words were just a whole bunch of hot air. Trump's actually out doing stuff. You want to know that opportunities are there? Get your head out of the rip down the statue booklet and start going out and looking through the help wanted ads. You'll see the opportunities that are there. But the problem is people don't want them. People don't want the opportunities. They just want to howl at the moon. And no matter what Donald Trump says, no matter what Donald Trump does, the media has designed it so this way it is a great thing to be in hate with Donald Trump. That's what they're doing. Here's the big, huge win at the end of the day for Donald J. Trump. He will, for a second time, if he continues to stay focused on creating jobs and wealth in this country, if he continues to protect against this nutbag over in North, uh, North Korea, not by sending him 1-800 flower packages like Obama would, oh, let's just talk this out with Kim. Maybe we could make him see the light. We could all be friends. Yeah, Barack, why don't you send him a message from Nelson Mandela? See how that works. No, no. Trump exactly is giving this guy the words he needs. Yeah, Kim? You got some big missiles? You want to see what a real missile looks like? Keep it up, pal. You want to shoot four missiles into Guam? Not only are we going to knock them down, but we're going to respond with 400. Give it your best shot. Go ahead. That's the way you deal with these people. That's the way you deal with some loudmouth in a bar who's going to sit there and tell you how he's going to kill you. Oh, you're going to kill me? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Take your first punch. He's doing what he needs to do. He's sitting down, he's talking to his generals, something that Obama never did. And he's saying, how do we handle this guy? And they say, look, we've been around doing this for a long time. Guys like him, they just need to realize the fact that if they've got a gun, you've got a bigger gun. And when you show them that you have a bigger gun, you're not gonna back down and you're not intimidated, they're gonna shut the hell up. Yeah. So Trump, you know what happens? Let me tell you what happens. If he continues to create new jobs, help businesses, because he doesn't create them, businesses do. But if he helps businesses continue to create new jobs in the way that he is, and people start having more money in their pocket, and he continues to secure our borders and to send home the people who have no right to be here, and therefore we don't have more Kate Steinle stories that get ignored. If he continues to make sure that he keeps Kim in a box, he'll get reelected again. Nobody will ever admit that they voted for him, unless you and I, but he just created one million jobs, helped create 1 million jobs, President Trump did. You think all of them are Republicans? You think all of them are conservatives? No. Many of them are Democrats. Many of them, over the past eight months, have seen their lives significantly change. They have money in their pocket. They have a purpose to get up every day. They don't feel like you know they've got to go collect a welfare check, which they never thought they'd have to collect in their life. But now they have opportunity again. Maybe, maybe next year we could take a vacation. Maybe, maybe we could get that new car. We could definitely pay down some of the bills. When they sit there in that voter booth and they try to think to themselves, who will do this for me again? You think they're going to pull the lever for Senator Warren or Bernie Sanders? 
You think they're going to sit there and, and wonder why it is that the president didn't say David Duke's name and instead said, we've got to stop the hating on all sides? No. They're going to look down in their wallet. They're going to see a couple of hundred dollar bills. They're going to see a credit card that's all paid up. And they're going to remember the fact that in three weeks, they're going on a small little getaway with their family. Finally. Something they didn't do during President Barack Hussein Obama's time in office. Yeah, Obama was a sweet talker and he was smooth and he doesn't talk like uh, Trump does and he doesn't get off, off message. But you know what he didn't do? He didn't make your life any better. At least Trump, with all of his sidebars, with all of his sometimes, what did he just say? At least he's getting the job done. So as far as the media goes, I can tell you this, in the same way I told you that Trump will win the election last year, and that he would win the ele- uh, that he would win the electoral college, and I explained to you how it was that they were going to do this and this and this and this to try to distract you, I'm telling you this right now. This story will not go away. They will continue to hound on it for as long as they possibly can. They will try to paint him and you as a racist. They will try to paint us all as the alt-right. They will try to paint it so this way we hate people. That you hate your Hispanic and, 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 and black neighbors. That you hate anybody from the other side. That you are filled with hate and vile. And that you are part of the base that Trump doesn't want to upset. It's the furthest thing from the truth. And so the best thing you can do is ignore these morons. And every time on DennisMichaelLynch.com that we put out a story that actually provides some backing to what it is that I've just told you in the last half hour, your responsibility is to share that thing. That's how the message gets out. The people that you share it with may come back and give you a little bit of a BS. They may give you some static. They may not even get back to you, but they're going to read it. And in the same way that the narrative tries to get pushed and pushed and pushed from the left, well, we're going to keep on pushing and pushing and pushing from the truth. And that's that. All right. So giving you as much as I've got to give. And uh, so uh, I'll say again what I said at the beginning, in case for those of you who jumped on late, starting to feel a little better here. Not 100% yet. You can probably tell. Uh, But we are aiming for September 11th to start doing the full time again. Our uh, new studio is almost uh, fully built. In fact, I'm uh, going to be taking a look at it tomorrow morning. And um, we're going to start doing the walk and talks every single day again around September 11th. Hopefully I'm aiming for that day, to be quite honest. All right. And then uh, until the next time, uh, keep on going to DennisMichaelLynch.com and share and keep on pumping out articles for you. All right. And if you haven't gotten the down, uh, if you haven't gotten the app, you should get the DML app. Go to uh, face, uh, Facebook, go to uh, Google Play or, oh my God, I used to write all this stuff off like nothing. Do you remember that? Go to Google Play or go to uh, the Apple Store and look for DML app, download it, make sure you get the notifications on. And that is that. All right. Until the next time we meet again, may God bless you. May God bless our troops. May God bless the President of the United States. May God bless these United States. And may God bless everybody who's filled with hate. May he shower them with love. See you later. Media, no matter what it tried to do, could not pick the president this time. That being said, this is what's happening here again. Again, I want to emphasize a few things before I get into what will be probably somewhat of an emotional rant because uh, I cannot believe what I am watching. I guess I can believe it. Understand something um, uh, that, that cannot be argued. There is one thing that the media will pound on all day long. It is the number one topic that drives the media. They love it. They absolutely love it when it comes to the surface. And that is race. They love race wars. You must understand this. You take a Trump tweet at the worst case, and you take the smallest of little race wars, they won't tune in to Trump. Race wars for the media is the number one. In the videos, uh, we have been working around the clock, 
great staff we have and just fantastic people on the other side, meaning you. And uh, I ask you, remember that the most powerful thing you have is that share button. And with without using it, it's sort of like, you know, having a nice crisp $100 bill and, I don't know, throwing it in the garbage. So make sure that you hit the share button at all times. That is how it is that you do your part in battling what is basically an insane media. That's my new term, insane media. I want to discuss with you uh, some of the things that have taken place over the past couple of days. I'm talking about uh, the unfortunate events that took place in Virginia, but just as infor as as un just as bad, put it that way, is the way that it's being handled after the fact. And um, and I say that with no uh, disrespect to the people who have lost their lives. Obviously, there's no greater loss than that. But we need to. Hey, Dennis Michael Lynch here, coming to the first time for a long time. It's been a, a while since I've been doing the live. Anyway, um, <clears throat> all right, see the audience is starting to climb here. So let me just jump in. I haven't been here for a while with you. Uh, hope you're well. We will be coming back full time, uh, middle of September. Hopefully sometime, uh, I don't know, September 11th is my target date, but we're starting to feel a lot better on this side. Things are uh, improving vastly, and uh, but slowly. So anyway, we're hoping that uh, things will be uh, set by September 11th here, and we could get resumed to our walk and talks at that point. Uh, I wanna say thank you to all of you who have continued to check in on our website, which is doing incredibly well. Best it's ever done, uh, to be quite honest, uh, in terms of how many articles and all the different things we're covering from the news. And um, you know, so although I haven't been doing one thing, it stops everything else. How can I prove I'm right? Think about this. Think about all the different events that have taken place. Uh, terrorist attacks over in Europe, things happening here in the US, and no matter what, CNN, MSNBC, they'll never cover that other stuff. They'll just stick to the Russia narrative. They wanna pound that home because they think that's their champion. They think that's the ticket to get Trump out is the Russia thing. Now we know that the Russia thing is a bunch of hot air, but they continue to continue with it. And as I've told you before, they'll continue to continue with it for as long as they possibly can, trying to take it into the 2018 midterms, and then they'll try to take it into the 2020s. And ultimately, it will come back to be that Trump didn't do any kind of collusion with the Russians. Honestly, Trump isn't that smart. And when I mean that, I don't mean that in a, in a derogatory way. I mean, he's not that calculated. He doesn't connect the dots. He is, a, he is a reactionary. He really recognized what's happening here. If you remember back in September, uh, the first walk and talk I had ever done, I had said, hey look, you know, I've been a member of the media for, for nine years and I can tell you what's going on behind uh, those doors, stuff that you don't see. Uh, Donald Trump is gonna win this election. They know he's gonna win this election. They're scared to all living hell that he's gonna win this election. And so this is what they're gonna start doing. And every single thing I told you came to fruition. Why is that? I don't have a magic ball. Uh, it's because I understand what goes on behind those doors. I seen it. Uh, I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it as a guest. I've seen it as a host. I've seen it uh, on the radio. I've seen it on the TV. I've seen it in every single last way. It's, 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 it's sickening. Um, and forever, uh, the media has controlled the narrative. Forever, the media has picked the president. And so what happened with Donald J. Trump is that he changed all that. He made it to where 